the fastest production car ever. A top speed of 240.3 miles an hour means it covers a mile in 15 seconds. It holds records for acceleration and the highest speed round a circuit, which was set by me at 195. I tested it on TV way back in 1992, and it's still the drive I get asked about most. It's been a long time. Live the dream. The McLaren transcends what normal cars stand for. It exists in a fairy tale world where the usual rules do not apply. Only 100 examples were ever made, 75 road cars and 25 racing versions. Most people live their entire lives without ever seeing one. If you're really, really lucky, you might catch a fleeting glance as one of these mysterious machines cruises past. But the reality is, few will ever drive one, even fewer ever own one. <laughs> The McLaren was designed and built with just one rule in mind. There was to be no compromise on anything. Which is probably why it ended up costing, are you ready for this? £634,500. Well, for starters, the engine bay is lined with pure gold. The best heat reflector there is. And it houses an amazing 6.1 litre V12. Only BMW were brave enough to take on the daunting specification that Murray demanded. Yet even by weighing every last washer and seal, it came out 16 kilograms too heavy. But it didn't matter. 627 horsepower was beyond anyone's dreams. Production may have stopped in 1998, but the McLaren experience still carries on for the fortunate few owners. It's an experience that includes the five-star service of the McLaren customer care department. Owners have had paint matched to everything from aubergines to watch faces. Some like their monogram woven into the carbon fibre. Buy an F1 second hand and McLaren will spend three months rebuilding and retrimming it to as new. Happily fitting modern conveniences like sat nav and mobile phones. Unfortunately, client confidentiality prevents us from telling you about some of the more interesting additions. Every job, however, no matter how small, ends with a four hour valet. For all the records and amazing facts, perhaps the F1's best trick is its usability. Sure, as one owner told us, for the price of a crash in a McLaren you could buy a Ferrari, but have a bit more courage and you'll discover it's a pussycat around town. I've been privileged enough to drive the F1 on several occasions, but it's still the memories of that original road test that remain strongest. The thing I perhaps remember most about that momentous day ten years ago was when having spent half a day poodling around on the public roads getting used to the car, I finally dropped it down to second gear and opened the throttle. 120 miles an hour, 130, 140, 150, 160 miles an hour. And that feeling of sheer exhilaration still doesn't change to this day. The whole thing about driving this McLaren, it's not just this central driving position that gives this Formula One experience, but it's the, the feel of the steering, the feel of the brakes. The car is so alive, alive beneath you. Some journalists will say the brakes aren't good enough, but that's rubbish. Some journalists will say it's a bit twitchy. Well, <laughs> I'm happy to twitch this Trying to put the F1 experience across is almost impossible. Words don't do it justice. This may give you a better idea. It's exhausting, it's exciting, it's exhilarating, it's everything you ever want. Yes, it cost £634,500. But you know what? McLaren still didn't make any profit. So you could say the F1 is worth every penny.
It's 10 years old, yet it doesn't even look like dating. Talk to Gordon Murray and he'll tell you that he wouldn't do anything different if he had to build it again today. I'll say it again, the McLaren F1 is the greatest car in the world and I can't see anything ever beating it.